All right, front wheel. Both sides are pretty similar. Uh, my bike has the aftermarket ring of fire. Lights has these aftermarket lights. It doesn't really matter. You gotta take this chrome cover off. There's a plastic trim piece here that just snaps on. This just pulls off. So you pull it off the back, two tabs on the front. And there you start to get access to one bolt and then you get two exposed bolts here. And that takes the whole chrome hubcap off. That's where we're heading right now. has a stepped washer at the bottom. A little bit crusty on mine, I'll clean those up. Same thing, step washer. All right, now this hooks right back here behind this back strap. Just unhook it and there you go. So again, mine has the aftermarket ring of fire LED, so that's why it's got wires. Your may, yours may not have any wires. Uh, if you don't have that. So because of that, I'm going to have to kind of leave mine hanging here. Um, they did sort of crimp connectors and things, and I'm just going to kind of leave it alone. So there are pinch bolts to get the axle out. This bracket that is what you hold the, um, what holds the hubcap on. This is your speedometer cable, and then you have your caliper, which needs to come off as well. Um, so I'm going to open the other side to this point first. Let's go ahead next and let's get the calipers undone. Now to do that, you've got to undo these Allen head bolts. This is a six millimeter Allen head at the top. Piecer. I'll leave that one like that. <clears throat> and like the back, they're different sizes. This bottom is a five millimeter here. All right. So five, six. Should be able to spread your brake pads enough to wiggle this thing off. There you go. More spider webs. Spider webs. There's my pads. They're a little worn, but they're still neat. There's a lot more till that wear strip is gone. I am not gonna change these right now. They're gonna stay the way they are. I'm going to tuck this back up in here. Next to, on my hubcap. So now everything's free except my pinch bolts in this axle. So we're going to deal with that in a minute. What I want to do is go around the other side. I need to get the nut off of the axle and I don't want to loosen these pinch bolts yet first. So, All right, this side you're in the shade. Same deal. This is the five. I have the five in here, so let's do the five first. And then the top is the six. Press the pistons in just a little to get enough play to get them off. Again, spider webs, I'll dust all these off. See my wear, plenty of wear left on this. Put this back up here. All right, now I want to undo this axle nut. <clears throat> this is a bolt that goes into the end of the axle. I want to undo it before it release the clamps. Let's undo this 22 millimeter. 
22. That's all it took. And again, this is just a bolt that threads into the end of the axle. I'm gonna leave this here in case I need to bump it with a hammer. My next step is gonna to be to undo these pinch bolts on both sides. Pinch bolts, 12 millimeter. These come all the way out. We're gonna take them all the way out. Don't know they have to, but we're gonna do it. Same thing on the other side. Like I did with the rear, what I'm gonna try to do is put a screwdriver in here. Give it a bit of a spin and see if I can sort of pull it out. What I can do also is pry a little and extract it. So it's moving. So now I'm gonna take the nut or the bolt out of the other side. There's the bolt, I took it out. And uh, so in case you're wondering, I put a motorcycle jack under it. So I'm gonna get this thing up completely on the ground, off the ground and uh, yeah, do both tires at once. I, I have the luxury of having one I'm gonna go ahead and lift the bike more now. That's the wheel rolled out. This is the uh, speedometer drive that I told you about. It's got two ears on it that engage in the in the against the side of the wheel. The other side of the wheel has a spacer. Here, this comes out. It can only go on that side. That's it. All done. Okay. Time to put the front wheel back on. So what do we need? We need the axle and we need the bolt on the end of the axle. Um, there's a spacer for the right side and the left side has the speedometer pickup. We'll see that in a minute. Then you have the brackets that hold the chrome cover, the sort of hub cap kind of thing, and the pinch bolts. The pinch bolts hold the bracket on and um, they pinch the axle in place. So you have them for the left side. The left side will have the hook for the speedometer cable and then the bracket for the right side and the pinch bolts. You will then have a caliper, your caliper bolts. So you have two caliper bolts that hold your brake calipers on each side. You will have a bracket that holds your brake hose and they are labeled L and R so you can't screw them up. And then you put your chrome cover on, and then you have your trim bolts that are, pick the cleanest ones you can. The two down in the cover have a stepped washer. And the top one is the same, but doesn't. Mine are a little crusty, so they're gonna look as good as they look. And that's it. So let's um, put these on. My bike does have some auxiliary lights that we'll have to work around. Um, it has ring of fire and some other lights that are a little crusty we're gonna leave them on for now and uh, we'll go from there okay so we've got our wheel new tires your drive speedometer has the two lug wings on it and it will match your speedometer driven gear and they need to engage um, before the axle goes through. On the other side, you just have the basic spacer um, that goes in. We're 
gonna put a little grease on the axle shaft just for future proofing for somebody. bike, your wheel with the driven speedometer gear spacer on the other side should all mostly line up, shouldn't take much. Lower the bike a little, make life a little easier for alignment, and in it goes. Um, so that's the start. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take the nut, put the nut in on the other side, or the bolt, I should say, in on the other side for now, just to hold everything together. And I will take our bracket. This holds the speedometer cable and it starts the clamp bolts. Let's go ahead and start those just to get them started. Same thing on the other side. All right, those are just hand tight. So our next step is getting our calipers that are hanging hanging around in place with our caliper bolts. So we're going to move and work on that. Okay, for the caliper, this is the left side of the bike. If that's not apparent. Um, I just kind of washed this off. That's all. Uh, it has two bolts. They have two mount points. This is your floating mount point. Um, so the caliper can move, and this is your fixed one down here on the fork. Um, so you should have enough room between your pads to slip it over your disc. If you didn't step on your brake while you had the wheel off, and then it'll kind of line up roughly where you want to go. Two bolts, two different sizes, larger one. Can't screw this up smaller one and we're just gonna again just get these hand tight for now we'll come around torque everything up at the end so next thing is the uh, the clamp for the um, brake hose it's got a strain relief um, rubber sleeve these are labeled L and R. L for the left side, can't screw it up. Goes around, grabs that strain relief. They nest together, sort of only one way they can go. And then they go here to this mount point on the frame. You use one of these trim screws like the wheel cover. There's two different lengths. This is the shorter one. The longer ones go through the big plastic. So this is a shorter one. Um, and this one's not visible once you put your, your uh, trims on. So uh, once you put the plastic cover over this, this one's not visible. Um, but this gets you shorter of the of them. The two longer ones go down uh, right here, holding the plastic trim on. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna switch to the other side and get the same setup going on the other side. We'll torque all this down, then we'll deal with the trims. Okay, right side of the bike, same thing. As long as you haven't stepped on the brake, uh, the discs, the pads should be far enough apart. Um, larger bolt, smaller bolt right here. Um, it's only really going to go one way. You, you really can't screw this up. If you've taken it apart, you know how it goes together. Get it slid in place. Larger bolt. Smaller bolt down here. We're going to go ahead and just get them hand tight again. 
sort of just snug up. Okay, next is this uh, hose clamp that holds the hose in place. Goes around, labeled R and L, R for this side, right side. They hook together, then it goes here, and you bolt it with the smaller of these trim bolts. These are technically not trim bolts here because you're never gonna see them. Um, started. When I say smaller, I mean shorter of these bolts. Let's slide up here and we'll tighten it up in just a second. So it's got a hook together. i to squeeze it when I get my socket on here. We'll do that in just a second. Torque for a front axle bolt is 90 newton meters. 90. That's nothing to sneeze at. That's 22 millimeter on that one. Torque for pinch bolts is 22 millimeter newton meters. You can use a quarter inch drive if you got it. That'll. Torque for front brake caliper is uh, 23 newton meters, virtually the same. We need to stop right here. There are two different torque specs for these two different size bolts. The manual's very clear. The larger bolt is a caliper bracket bolt. The smaller one is an anti-dive piston bolt. And the torque specs at the top list anti-dive piston bolt at 12 newton meters and for the A model, a 23 newton meter for a front caliper bolt. I got this wrong, and you will see I paid the price on the other side of the bike. Not liking that. I'm not liking the way that keeps turning. Um, I don't like that at all. Um, I don't like that. Let me see how it feels. I'll strip anything. Yeah, I just stripped it. I said I didn't want to do it, and I did it. Now I sheared the bolt off. Sure enough, I sheared the bolt off. That is now a problem for me. Um, I need to get it out, get the caliper out, get that bolt out, and order a new one. It is an unhappy day for me. All right, I took this top bolt out. Let's take this bracket off the top, undo what we just did. Let's take the caliper out, and that bolt is broken off right there. That is going to um, be not ideal. I am gonna to have to drill and use a very fine extractor 
and extract it. Um, I'm gonna have to extract it this way because it obviously wouldn't thread anymore. It was binding. So there must be some goo in those threads. That is better than uh, stripping out the bracket, the bolt breaking, but still a lot of work for me. All right, front brakes. What did I do? I screwed up, right? Remember, I broke the bolt. So how did I get it out? Um, I didn't film it, sorry about that. It came out a heck of a lot easier than I thought it would. Um, long story short, it, it broke, sort of sheared off even with the inside. So um, what I did was I flipped it over and I drilled a very small drill bit through this side, which essentially every cut was reversing it out of the hole. And before I drilled barely any of it, you can see, it reversed itself out of the hole and back out of the hole. So I'm gonna order the right bolt, but until then I went to my local hardware store and I got a six millimeter metric cap head bolt by 25 millimeters long, which is correct. The head was too big, so I put it in my drill and I filed it down until it just cleared. It's a stainless steel bolt. Yes, I know this isn't perfect, but for, for right now, it's okay. And um, the plan is to use this for now. But what I think happened though, is it bit. So what I need to do is clear these threads out. I have a thread chaser. Now I'm gonna get a thread chaser and clear the threads out. I think they just caught on a ramp of dirt and wouldn't go any farther. And then I over torqued it. So let me do that. Let me go get a thread chaser. Okay, so I have a thread chaser. It's not a tap. It's not as aggressive as a tap. It's a chaser, and I'm gonna, I use these a lot. Um, and it just cleans the debris out of threads. If there's a bad spot, you run it back and forth a few times. You can usually do them completely by hand, like I did here. And it just cleans the debris and the goo out of the threads. It's got some pretty aggressive flutes on it, so it picks that up. Now let's see how my, my thinned down bolt. You see, now it goes in really smooth. Now I think I'm gonna get a true torque out of it. And uh, that's what we're gonna try. So we're gonna go back to where we were, which is caliper on. Top bolt. We already had this one in and torqued. 23 newton meters. Bottom one that I modified for now. I'll order the correct one before I go on long, long drives. But for our purposes, it's going to be great. feels good. That's what I'm going to do for now. I'm not going any further than that. This one needs a whole lot more threading in. There we go. I'm going to call that good for now uh, for the front. Now I got to put the wheel cover assembly on. Okay, continuing in my display of things I don't know, this bracket that holds the brake hose has a step on it. It goes on top of the plastic wheel covers. You don't put it on until now. Um, hooks around, then it steps on that plastic wheel cover right there. Again, it has this little interlock piece, only really one way it can go. It's not really challenging. unless you're me. Um, put the interlock together to sort of sandwich on top of the brake hose. I say it's not challenging and now I can't hook it. 
it's impossible to show you and do it. There we go. Anyway, hooks together, goes on top of there. My light, my bike has these aftermarket lights. I don't know that I'm going to keep them, but they're there if I'm putting them back in. Get that started. I also have a ground wire for these aftermarket lights and grounds right under this thing. So I'm going to sort of feed that in there all at the same time. Eight millimeter. Use your hat. Use your socket. Line it up. Give it a couple turns. There you go. Now these wires all tuck in however they work for you. Um, there's some wiring loom here for me. This is all the aftermarket stuff. Your bike may have none of this. Um, and then plastic cover goes on here to uh, hide that. I'm gonna